This video is going to show you how you can zip up a folder in Windows 11 without any software needed. If you're watching this as a short, hit on the thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hang tight, more details coming up. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So in Windows 11, you do actually have a zip facility built into it. This is the first system that Microsoft have released, which allows you to actually zip up files. Some of the previous systems have allowed you to unzip files, but not actually create a zip file. So in Windows 11, you've got that built in. Now you might be wondering, what is a zip file? Now a zip file can basically collate a load of files together. And in the early days of zip, it used to help compress those files, make them smaller, make them easier to fit onto a floppy disk, a CD or easier to email. Now, it does compress them a little bit nowadays, but I must admit a lot of the file formats now are much more efficient than what they ever used to be. So zipping a file up is probably not going to reduce the size of the files very much. Certainly if you're zipping up PDF files or pictures, because as I say, those files are quite efficient as they are. But you might find if you've got loads of word processing files, then it may well help. It may well reduce the size of them. So what's the point of actually zipping the files up nowadays? Well, it may well be easier for you to transport those files to a different system or to basically share a whole folder, say, for instance, with another person, like send it, send the folder to them via email. You might have a folder like, say, for instance, the one I've got here, which is a folder called forms. Now, let's just have a look. I've got several files and folders in this forms folder. Uh, what have I got there? I've got... 39 files and three folders. Now, can you imagine if I had to attach all those 39 files to an email? It would take me forever. Plus, it wouldn't also retain the folder structure because I can't attach a folder to an email. I can only attach a file. So what can we do? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to find the folder that we want to zip up. OK, once we've found it, move our mouse over it and click on the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. And once you've clicked on the right hand button, you will get this menu come up if you've clicked over a folder. So one of the options there right in the middle of the menu is compress to zip file. So just move your mouse over compress to zip file. OK, make sure it's highlighted and then click the left mouse button. And this might take a bit of time. So there you go. It says compressing and it's now cre created our zip file. You can see it there. Forms is highlighted in blue. And as you'll probably notice, the little yellow folder has actually got a zip going through the middle of it. It might be a bit difficult to see because it is quite small. But what I can do now is I can change this file name if I want to. I can just type whatever I like. So. I could, for instance, retype forms zip file. I could leave it as it was before, but it might be hard to differentiate between the forms folder and the form zip file. Now, what if I now wanted to email that onto somebody? Well, as I can see on the right there, we've got the size column. So as you can see there, you've got forms zip file, then you've got the date and time modified and the type is compressed zip. And as you can see there, the size is 19.531. So 19 and a half megabytes. Let's see if that's reduced the folder by much. So I'm going to go to the original forms folder, just put my mouse over it, my mouse pointer over it, should I say. And as you can see there, yeah, the original size was 20.4 megabytes. So it's reduced it a little bit. So, OK, so now what we want to do is want to attach this to an email. So we go into our emails and I'm just going to go into Outlook, which uh, is my email address. I'm going to create a new email. I'm going to type the person's name who I want to send it to. And I'm going to type in here a subject. So zip file of forms folder. Let's just pop that, pop that in there. OK, and the next thing I want to do is I want to attach that 
file. So we're looking for the paper clip. So let's just have a look, paper clip there. Okay, and there we go. Move my mouse over paper clip and I'm gonna click on attach file. Okay, and I'm going to browse to this browse this computer. So let's do that. Click browse this computer. Now, depending on what email system you're using, this may vary. So where was it? It was in the documents folder. That's where the forms were. So there's the original forms. And as you'll see here, if I click on forms and then click open, they go, it won't actually attach the forms folder. It just takes me into the forms folder. Let's go back to documents and we should see further down. There you go. There's our forms zip file. So let's double click that. And there we go. So it says, how do you want to share this file? So again, this might differ from email system to email system. It's only because I'm using Outlook. So I'm going to say attach as a copy. OK, so let's left click that. And as you can see, my forms zip file is now being attached to the email and this little green lines going across. Once that green line disappears, I believe in Outlook, that means that the file has been uploaded and can be sent. Now, again, if you're using a different system, you might not see this green line. It might just attach to it, but uh, without having to upload it, especially if you're using the desktop version of Outlook. But if you're using, say, for instance, AOL, Yahoo, Gmail, it may take a little while for the zip file to upload. OK, as a rule of thumb, I should say that really you should keep attachments lower than 20 megabytes, anything larger than 20 megabytes. And uh, you may well find that the email can't be accepted by the server that you're sending it to. So i.e., the recipient server or it might be that your server can't accept files or send files larger than 20 megabytes. So there we go. So I've attached it. OK, let's just click down there a bit further and let's just type a message. So please find uh, forms zip file. This file contains the whole folder. So there we are. So the next thing we need to do is we just need to send it. So let's click on send. OK, so at this point, you might be thinking, what happens when it gets to its final destination, i.e. to the person you've sent it to? So what they need to do is they just need to open the email and then they'll see the zip file in there. So they just click on the zip file or if there's a little arrow to the right of it, click on that and click download. And what should happen is it should actually download to their downloads folder or it might actually ask them where do they want to download it to. So wherever they've selected to download it to, but if they've not had to select where to download it to, they just need to open up any yellow folder, go into the downloads folder, and there we go, there it is. So what we can do now is they can double left click on that, and then they can go extract all, and they just need to say where do they want to extract it to. So let's click on browse, and we want to put it in the documents folder. So click on documents, but it might be somewhere different. So click select folder when you're happy, you're at the place you want to unzip them to select folder. And then we click on extract just at the bottom there. Now, this bit might take a bit of time. It really depends on how many files you've got there. So there you go. The fold, the forms folder has been received. And there it is. If we go into the forms folder, as you can see here, there we go. There's the original folder with its structure and the original folders and files all in there nice and safe. Now, if they have downloaded the form zip file to their downloads folder, then let's just go back to the downloads folder. Once we've extracted it, then we can just delete it. So let's click on any yellow folder. OK, go to downloads and look for the form zip file. And like I say, look for the one with the zip going through it. Left click once on it and either click on the bin up there or press the delete key on your keyboard and that will get rid of it. So there you go. That guide showed you how you can zip up a folder, send it via email and how the person who's receiving it can unzip it and put it back on their computer. I hope this guide helps. And if it did, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos covering all sorts of subjects. Whilst you're here, hopefully you'll find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. 
I hope you liked this video and if you did, hit that like button. If you think your friends, your family or your work colleagues might like it, then please don't forget to share this on your social media timelines. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you find out about all my latest videos the second they're released, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, then hit all. You can also find me on Twitter at CWTech and my website at CWTech.co.uk. Liking, sharing and subscribing really helps support this channel. Thanks for watching.